been said about the Holy Spirit without it really being the Spirit of God speaking for himself. Oftentimes people will go ahead and act according to their own ideas about something and we like to say that that's an ideology. We like to say that they follow a certain practice of their ideas. And unfortunately, a lot of times, that's what happens when it comes to the discussion of the Holy Spirit. There isn't that precise, set down, and dogmatic understanding of who the Holy Spirit is because people were afraid of, quote unquote, blaspheming the Holy Spirit by saying something bad about him or doing something wrong or somehow getting too carried away by going way over the top with Pentecostalism, where they began to get carried away with all the gifts of the Spirit to where people wanted to deny that there were gifts of the Spirit. Somewhere within all that confusion, there needs to be a reality check, because God is a Spirit, and He has sent His Holy Spirit to us if we were ready to receive Him. Without the God that we know, being that God is triune, Father, Son, and Spirit, we can't operate fully effectively unless we understand Him as Father, and as he operates within that capacity as son, as he has manifested himself in the flesh and come and died for our sins and restored the relationship that we should have with our Father, and by spirit, which is where he is operating now in our life, by changing us and making us, by developing us and causing us to be made into the image of his only begotten son. So you see, without there being the spirit of God in your life, you can't do what God wants you to do, and you can't be what God wants you to be. As a matter of fact, the question should be, are you saved if you do not have the Spirit of God? I doubt it. I really don't see how you could be saved without the Spirit of God within you. So, looking at that, we began to read this book, Living Waters, by Chuck Smith, because it's a very precise way of dealing with the Holy Spirit and subject to understanding it by way of God revealing to us what is applicable for us to be used in our lives every day, so which is why we were developing it as a devotional study as part of Vidigo. So Vidigo's spirit has been looking at the Spirit of God and trying to understand what he would say to us. So today, listen carefully to what he might speak and what he might inspire you with so that you would operate not according to your own understanding, but according to the leading of the Spirit of God as he reveals to you Jesus. God's special agent. The Holy Spirit is called, the Holy Spirit is God himself, a person with whom you can enjoy a personal relationship. He is not merely an impersonal force or power or essence within the universe, but he is rather a person a person who can speak to you, a person with whom you can speak to. He is a person who can guide you, who can help you, who can strengthen you, who can teach you the truth of God. The Holy Spirit is the agent through whom God works today in the world. Within the church and in individual believers, he operates. That is why we need to become well acquainted with the Holy Spirit, for he is the one to whom the Lord has placed over the church to guide the church, to direct the church, and to empower its activities. When Jesus told his disciples, I will pray the Father and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever, John 14, 16, he was encouraging his men to prepare for a new way in which God would thereafter be relating to them. God would manifest himself in a new and unique way. The new way, but not a totally foreign way. In Greek, the word another in the phrase another comforter is alos, or alos, which means of the same kind or equal quality, another of the same order. A second Greek word, heteros, can also be translated another, but it means of a different quality. For example, suppose you were going to rent a car from Hertz. When you approach the counter, they say, we're sorry, sir, you reserved a little compact geo, but we happen to be out of the model right now. We can give you another car, a Lincoln townhouse, or town car, for the same price. Would that be acceptable? That another in Greek would be the term heteros. It isn't the same or of the same quality. On the other hand, suppose you had reserved a town car and they said, I'm sorry, we can't give you a town car, but we'll give you a Cadillac instead. 
that would be another vehicle of more or less the same quality as the one you reserved, which would be alos, using the Greek word. So when Jesus says the Holy Spirit is of the same quality as himself, he means that the Spirit possesses the same essential qualities that he himself does, especially those of divinity and of personality. In essence, he tells his men, I have been with you, but now I am going away. But I will not leave you alone. I will ask the Father to give you another comforter, an allos of the same quality, the same kind as myself. Just as I was with you and took care of every situation for you, so now the Holy Spirit will be with you and will take care of every situation for you. Jesus said, as many as are born of the Spirit are led by the Spirit and guided by the Spirit, that the Spirit of God would reveal Jesus to us, that he would instruct us, that he would be our guide, that he would be the one to whom we would turn to, talk to, live with, and abide in. Now there are people that tend to get into this fire and doves and water and you name it, dogs and cats and birds and gosh, I don't even know all the things that people have invented nowadays. But you see, the Holy Spirit is gentle. The Holy Spirit is peaceable. The Holy Spirit is meek. The Holy Spirit can be entreated. Just like Jesus was, so too the Holy Spirit is to us. It is not someone who goes around slaying people and knocking them down on the ground. Your emotions may do that to you in some way when you become overwhelmed by something you've never experienced before, but that's not what the Holy Spirit does. I'm sorry. It's not what people are doing. When you speak in a different language, it's true. There are gifts of the Spirit that the Holy Spirit can give you. But those are things that will be understood as we read about them, as you begin to understand and as the Holy Spirit begins to operate in your life to give you a way of understanding that it would be acceptable without it being some kind of, you know, kind of TV program that you've seen where people act all weird and strange. That's not how God operates. God didn't save you that way, and he's not going to give you his Holy Spirit that way. He's going to be blessing you by giving you a comforter, by giving you someone who is just as meek and as tender as Jesus was, but who can also be as gloriously transformed even as the Son of God was on the Mount of Transfiguration. There is power in meekness. There is strength in gentleness. There is compassion, mercy, and an overwhelming ability to conquer all violent natures by love, which is what the Holy Spirit can do for you. The Holy Spirit was meant to comfort you. The Holy Spirit has come to be your comforter, to be your guide, to be your teacher, to be the one that Jesus sent for you. Why would you want anything less than what Jesus wants for you to have? So he wants to introduce you to the Holy Spirit and he wants you to know him even as God knows the Spirit of God and Jesus knows the Spirit of God, so too should you. Father, I pray that you would continue to reveal to us who your Spirit is, that as you have guided us and abided with us when you were living here on earth and then you left us, God, you did not leave us as orphans, but you sent us your Spirit, that he should reveal to us who he is. And as we talk to him and as we walk with him, as we know him, we would see Jesus. And as he is said to reveal Jesus to us, that as Jesus said that he was the physical manifestation of you, Father, then we would see you by seeing Jesus. And God, I thank you that it works in that way. For surely as you reveal all of these things to us, God, we can be knowledgeable of the workings of your Godhead in our life as you make us empowered and able to live in this world as we approach this last generation that we live in, as we become that light in the darkness, as we become shining even more so as we see the day of salvation coming ever closer. God, empower your people by giving them your spirit. And let the word of knowledge and the word of wisdom come upon them that they would understand what it is that your spirit is doing in their life. Even now, Jesus, I pray. Amen. Don't be afraid of the spirit of God. He's gentle. Trust me. You'll meet him. Before this is over, he will reveal himself to you.